Howdy. Out here practicing with the bow a little bit. I got uh, Brother John's bow I'm going to hunt with next. This is the second second week of bow season. I was fortunate I killed a, a deer the first time I sat in the stand the first week. A little doe with the bow Tracy White made for me. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hunt with this one until I shoot something with it. And I hope that will be this afternoon. Well, in, uh, anyway, uh, what I wanted to talk about today is uh, I use my compass a lot to find deer that I've shot. And, uh, and hogs, you know, whatever. But, but it, it's, a, it's a big help. And some guys had asked me to explain. A butterfly is flying all around me here. <laughs> some guys had asked me to explain uh, what I'm doing with it when I talk about getting a compass bear. Well, we just, we just shot a pretend deer right there. So we're going to pretend we're going to trail him with this compass. And uh, basically what I do, I shoot my shot. And you know, you listen, you watch the animal run. If it's, if you can see a long ways, you know, that's, that's one thing. But if, uh, you know, he goes, I'm hunting in some thick stuff. He goes, I listen. And then where I hear him stop, or I don't hear him anymore, at that point, I pull my compass out, I back my back against the tree, and I get a compass bearing. And I'm assuming everybody knows, you know, how to read a compass. You line up the, you line up the, uh, North on north there when you need them. North on north. You back up against the tree there, make sure it's all lined up, and the direction you last heard your deer, you look at that number. This is a fairly new compass. I, I've wore out two compasses. I towed them so much that I wear the numbers off of them. You can't see them anymore under my shirt. But, uh, and it don't have to be expensive. I think this is a, I don't know how you say it, Sylvia, Silva compass. Now, it's like 20 bucks and I would get I wouldn't get one of those little cheap ones that you find at your your big box stores there that cost five dollars I, I would get at least a twenty dollar one <laughs> but anyway that's that's what I do the deer runs I hear him last place I hear him I get that bear and when I, if I happen to be on the ground stalking I do the same thing I get that bear where I last saw him or heard him but on the ground I'll drop a piece of toilet paper right where I'm standing that's after I get my bearing. Then I'll walk to where the animal was standing when I shot him, and I'll drop a piece of toilet paper there as well. I keep it in my pocket right here on the right side. And that helps me, because if you shoot him on the ground, you're walking more than likely, and it's not a spot that you're going to remember. I was standing right here, so you mark it. That way you go back, and, and uh, you can run your bearing. And all I do, simply all I do, is walk. You know, I, I look for blood, and if there's tons of blood, well, you just track your deer. But if there's no blood, you didn't, maybe you didn't get an exit wound like the deer I shot the other day. I didn't even look for blood because I knew from the sound, the whack of it, that I hit the shoulder on the other side or the leg. And uh, there was a lot of air sticking out. So I didn't even look for blood. I just went straight to my compass bearing and walked pretty much straight to the deer. But uh, anyway, you just walk that bearing out till you think that you're about the distance where you heard or saw the deer last. And if it's in the daytime, you can mark a tree or something. You get a bear and, and know what tree it is and get out and walk straight to it. But if it's at night, you've got to trust that compass. And if you come to some thick stuff, don't go around it. Go straight through it and keep that bearing. And you'll walk past to where you, you thought, you know, you start looking when you get right there. You're always looking at the ground. But you start looking for blood and uh, maybe you cut some blood or see your deer and walk in uh, when you go way past what you think is too far, you come over a little bit, turn your compass bearing, and come back. And don't go, you, you're gridding it is what you're doing using your compass. So uh, let me pull my arrow right here, and uh, I'll use that. We got a, up to a fancy Maytag, Maytag buck over here, and we'll use that cardboard, and I'll do some drawing and show you some stuff. Let's see how we did on our shot right here. I don't think he'd have made it. Let me grab my air and we'll talk about some more stuff. All right, another tip for you guys that uh, are like me and uh, 
not broke by any means, but I ain't paying thirty dollars for three nocturnal knocks or light up knocks, whatever you call them. And when I can get like a sack full of these little white ones here for that. <laughs> so, uh, but I do buy those fluorescent strips that you uh, you wrap your arrows with, and I cut them in narrow strips, and I put them here on my arrow. And I, usually I'll put one down here, and it's not an aiming reference. It's if my arrow goes through and breaks and I'm tracking at night with my light, it'll find that, maybe see the broadhead piece too. And I don't want to lose my broadhead. But I, I found several deer, that, I may have found them anyway, but when I was running my grid and the air stayed in them, you know, from a long ways, these things reflect with your light. Or you may find your air broke, broke off on the ground, and if the air is laying there with blood on it, well, you probably got a blood trail too, right? So anyway, that's... Uh, you can do a whole bunch of arrows. You can buy one pack of them. They come in like six or a dozen. And they, they, you can go, you know, you see how wide it is. You can put them on a bunch of arrows. So that's something good to do. All right, here's my deer here. Let's see if we can get where we can see it. And doggone it. I was off a little bit. I wasn't quite in the center of his heart. I don't know, I don't know what happened right there. I'm gonna have to get Get some uh, big ear Chris to come over here and work with me a little bit. But anyway, let me show you some stuff here. And uh, let me get this thing where you can see it. We won't worry about seeing me. We're going to see the board. All right, right here is where you're at right here. Your deer is right here. Y'all see that? Here's your deer. That's where you're at. You shoot the deer and he runs like this in a, in a circle. What I'm talking about when you, this is the last place you hear him right here. Usually, what happens when when it's there, he's either dead there or he turns and goes away from you like that. Can y'all see that? But anyway, he's uh he's right there or he turns and goes away from you. You run your compass bearing just like that. It's it's pretty pretty simple stuff, and and it works. So that's how I use my compass. That's what I'm talking about when I get a bear and when I shoot something. If he runs at a distance, like say he runs like this, straight away from me, you get that compass bearing and, uh, where you last heard him at. Pretty simple stuff there, the way I, the way I do that. I hope you can see that. And this is very helpful if you're in a tree stand. Say you're up in a tree and uh, you can see down in things and it looks open to you. Like if I was climbing one of these trees here, these are my woods, thank you, good Lord. And look down, look down through there, it looked open. But when you get down on the ground, it ain't so open. You see that? You could actually, you could actually see your deer fall from the tree and have trouble finding him once you get to the ground. That's why that compass bearing is very important. So that's how I use a compass. And uh, by the way, I didn't come up with this. I learned this from the deer killing master himself, Mr. Warren Womack. A man with that kind of experience when he throws a tip out there on some of his videos or something, you listen to him. And uh, I know my buddy Chris Bikes, he's used it to find a lot of deer too. But it's a, it's a really good technique. And plus, your GPS battery may be dead or your phone don't pick up. This thing will get you out of the swamp too. It has for, I, I mean, I've been hunting way longer than there's been cell phones and GPSs, and, and uh, I have been lost a couple of times, but I finally made my way out, and that's because I thought my compass was lying. There was one time I thought I knew I was so good at where I was at, I was sure my compass was lying, and uh, I got in a bad mess. I actually started carrying two compasses, one around my neck and one in my pack, in case I thought it was lying. I pulled the other one out just to prove it. <laughs> so... Uh, Hope y'all learned something from this. I thank you for watching, and I like the comments. If you have anything, I'll probably do something with my stands, showing how I climb trees, which is nothing fancy. But uh, I'll probably do something like that. But I hope the next video I make will be a deer that I killed this afternoon with Brother John's bow right there. Thank y'all for watching. Keep the good Lord first, and see you next time.